Hello everybody, welcome to Strength Hammer, episode number 14. Yes, I checked before we started, so I knew knew which one we were on. <laughs> it is, what is it, September 8th already? September 8th. Yep. Yeah. We are recording. Uh, it's, it's Chuck Moore, as usual, the one who half-asses this podcast, uh, with two of my three regular hosts. We got... David Roke. Hello. You don't need to wave, David. Yeah, I, I gather now that the waving is useless, but the waving I tried it anyway. <laughs> Story and, of my life, waving is useless. <laughs> and we also have, as you heard, that wonderful laugh, Matt Hayward. Hello, Internet. They say hi, Matt. I'm I didn't hear it. I'm plugged in. It's, it's fine bunch of rude assholes that's <laughs> you hear that internet stop being I so see, rude i see the internet's collective middle finger stuck <laughs> up at matt there that was... <laughs> it was amazing that's, i'll be see. the uh, i'll be the heel of the internet and just <laughs> <laughs> oh boy that's how do you do that <laughs> oh listen it's easy you just you just gotta swing both ways that's <laughs> and then deny that you did it that's <laughs> You're here first. Go to the voting booth November 2nd. You'll see Matt Hayward just punching the voting booths as hard as possible. Who'd you vote for? Oh, you son of a bitch. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't answer. Shut your mouth. (laughs) How dare you? Uh, Yeah, so uh, we'll also have our fourth wheel. Mr. Neil LaRocca coming in later. He's he's running on uh, Neil time. So it might be 10, 15, 20 minutes. We may wrap up before he even gets here. We, we could make this a 10-minute <laughs> podcast, and just as soon as he gets in here, we just close it out. Yeah, everyone listening at home, whenever whenever he hops on, just be quiet, and then we'll just close, turn the lights out until he leaves. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Actually, you know what's really scary right now, Matt? Yeah. Uh, I'm looking at the, the video feed, which our audience cannot see, and uh, Dave, Dave is completely frozen. But he has a nice smile. He does have a great smile. It's worrisome. So, people at home can't see it. Well, it may just be us then. This is a. Uh, this turned out to be a great, great episode. Uh, well, Matt, <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, let's go through the usual. Let's do yeah. the uh, the fitness chat. See where you've been, how you've been, where you're improving. Yep, yep. Um, well, yeah. So as far as that goes, um, no major leaps uh, as of late. Just because, again, still working 50 to 55 hours a week. <laughs> um, but, uh, but again, it's still been, you know, uh, sugar intake has been reduced. Uh, you know, and you saw me drinking a can of Coke, but that's all I had to do. <laughs> you know, other than that, it's, you know, water intake is up. Um, you know, and like I said, if I do get a sweet tooth, what I've been doing during the day, I've been getting just a small uh, glass of coffee, you know. Uh, oh, yeah. So, so there's so again, we still have that. We still, you know, we're getting those habits in, and um, and then this past weekend, it was finally time to do the the lawn again, <laughs> since it's been so dry here, and so I was a little worried about like, well, where did my aerobic ability go and. So not only did I do the lawn, but I also had to go above and beyond with a little weed whacker and get you know around the fence and everything, and um, just as exhausted as normal. <laughs> <laughs> so there was no loss, and on top of that, I added activity and was still exactly where I was. So progress doesn't seem apparent at first, but then whenever you take a step back and can find a milestone, you actually get to see how far you are getting along. Yeah, I mean, you got to remember too. Um, yeah, how long did it take you to put on all the weight that you're now trying to lose? Because oh, it, it's probably been sixteen years. Right. <laughs> not that's going to take sixteen years, but it's not going right. to take you know three three minutes to get rid of it. So <laughs> right, it's a long process. Right. Um, yeah, like I said, I mean, it's. Um, I would like to have more time to dedicate towards. Um, 
towards some more fitness to actually get it as a focus as opposed to a just trying to build up into habit a little bit of just healthier habits. Well, I mean, healthy habits never stop, but I mean, yeah. like I said, try try to do three times a week, like spend an hour doing something, what, whatever suits uh, where you're at. And we can talk about that off air if you want, but um, yeah, I mean, you reach a point where like diet and, and habit changes will do a lot but you do have to start moving more you do have to start you know toning and creating muscle because the more muscle you have the more calories you're going to burn so right i mean now unless um you know frantically sobbing in the corner counts you know that's are you that's where my hobby has left me so that might... <laughs> <laughs> are you are you rolling around back and forth uh like... no but there's a lot of there's a lot of muscle of like stomach ab contusion and, you, you know need... just <laughs> see but you need to throw a tantrum arms and legs flailing okay like get get the but whole body have... in i don't have that much room so it's <laughs> <laughs> Start sobbing outside, then, Matt. I mean, that's the key. Ooh, that's it's a good true. Idea. Cry on your lawn so your yeah. neighbors can see how much effort you're putting into it. <laughs> and then you can water the grass with your tears. Yeah, there you go. Right. And, and then if the police yeah. show up, I'll be like, "Listen, I'm doing the tantrum diet. Can you please just?" <laughs> <laughs> or better yet, put up, put out a table, put up like a pop up tent, and then just say you're having a yard sale. <laughs> or, or if I want people to actually show up don't put out a sign for that says yard sale right right and we'll get into that inside joke later uh but for now dave i want to know what fitness you've been yes. doing because you've been pretty lackluster these I past have, couple episodes with this i have been trying to get my uh out of shape uh body on on foot i've been i've been trying to walk more still uh I've, i uh has struggled again with uh, this ridiculous heat that's not helping um, but I've been more physically active uh, uh -huh. the quarantine strangely has really helped with that um, but uh, yeah that next step is I need to start doing strength stuff strength. Uh, I need to be doing strength stuff, strength stuff. Strength yeah, stuff. I'm yeah. sorry I like that I'm using all the technical terms I haven't paid any attention to what lifts actually are since I was a freshman in college, so that was a long time ago. Um, I'm twice that age now. Actually, you know, it's More. it's, it's oh. interesting. Is is does the lifting? Because like a lot of people lift before, um, uh, you know, like they get into college and all that. But then like you know they get married and stop lifting. Like is it like the Warhammer hobby where like you lift until you to you, to you start dating somebody and then you stop lifting and then later you're like oh, i should lift again i'm not seeking to do like like oh my goodness it's neil well, wild uh, neil i'm not weird. seeking to do like any any heavy lifting but i mean i want to be able to like do a reasonable number of push-ups for my age you know so like well it, i want to get to the point where if i need to drop and give you 20 i can't well, here's here's uh, maybe what you should focus on, like being able to do a pull up, being able to you know bench your body Ooh. weight, um, being able to squat one and three quarters your body weight, being able to deadlift twice your body weight. That's a good starting goal for strength if you want to do like real strength. Uh, I would suggest the pull ups regardless because everybody should be able to pull themselves up, <laughs> just in Ooh. case you ever need to. I. So, so when I was in high school, at, at my peak physical fitness, uh, playing football and everything and doing all the lifting, and, and I could bench uh, twice my body weight and stuff like that, um, I, uh, I could maybe do two pull-ups. And that's with a lot of flailing about. Pull-ups were, <laughs> oh, pull were never my thing. Pull-ups were never my thing. One of those was when he, when he just jumped up to the bar. Ah! <laughs> Jumped up and hang on for dear life. Yeah, that, uh, so yeah. Whenever I was in high school, um, we had a really interesting gym where you could choose your electives and which type of gym class you wanted. And I always chose weight class. And um, by the end, the the highest I ever got for the bench was uh, two fifty, and I still couldn't do a pull up. <laughs> <laughs> and I was probably about I was probably about two twenty at that point. 
So why I couldn't do a pull up, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, two twenty is a pretty decent sized body weight to be doing pull ups too. So, like, but uh, especially if you're not trying at them and you're just doing the basic like mm, me bench, me deadlift, you know, basic powerlifting stuff. Like you're not going to do a pull up, even though you should be doing rows. But when we're young and lifting, we're also dumb and lifting. So, um, anyway, now that we have Neil. He joined us two two minutes before his designated time, I should say. So bravo! Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Early on the Neil o'clock, <laughs> <laughs> we're getting bonus Neil content, guys. Uh, Neil, what's your fitness been? Uh, I know we sort of tried to do some stuff together, and then it quickly fell apart. And we haven't done it yet. Well, uh, I've been uh, loosely uh, continuing with it, <laughs> so not as often as we had actually planned, but I'm still going with, so what we're doing is um, body weight, um, what do you want to call them, AMRAPs, I guess is what they call them, as many rounds as possible, or what's the other one called, Chuck? Imam, um, every minute on the minute. Imams, yeah, so every minute on the minute type stuff, yep. So um, working my way back onto that train a little bit, so I'm doing it right here in my living room. And, so is Imam uh, like, a, like, a, like a power hour for fitness people? It is like, so say you do 10 push-ups, let's throw something out there, 10 push-ups, 10 box box jumps, and 10 sit-ups. You do that, and then if you get it done quick, you get a little rest time. And then yep. the next minute starts, and just like you said, a power hour, basically, and so off you go. And uh, it sounds really easy as you start, and uh, by last uh, couple no, rounds... No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that. That sounds like a full day's effort right there. That's <laughs> it's, it's more of a warm up, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, Neil, you've been doing uh, not that for me. For me, it's more of a meltdown. I think. No, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> Matt, you need to tantrum every minute on the minute. Dave, you need to paint a model every minute on the minute. There you go. Oh God! But Neil, Neil, you've been uh... every year on the year. Oh yeah, maybe. <laughs> Neil, you've been doing this with your family then. Yeah, yeah my Which... uh, the kid. The kids find it funny. We were doing these uh, this particular exercise. I forget the name of it, where you just jump as far as you can, and you have to do like I don't know, like six of these jumps. You know, and, and the imam and my my son thought it was so hilarious that uh, he decided to join on in. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so, listen. Uh, it, it, no. As saddened as I am that it fell apart for us, I think it's probably better and better motivation for you to do it with your family, like you are. <laughs> so. <laughs> I applaud that. That's awesome. So, yeah, Amy's to CrossFit with me, and so we are going to get that hopefully a little bit more uh, in a regular uh, planned out environment here. Uh, the kids just started virtual learning today, so that's uh, been a little bit of the focus for the last couple of days. So they just got their first day of school in, and so after that, uh, when everything settles down, we had karate tonight. So that's why I was a little bit late. Uh, just brought them into the house literally uh, 10 minutes ago. So <laughs> That's fun. Uh, See, if I had to do virtual painting now, I would just stare at my computer until people started to be worried about me. Like virtual painting? And I would look up. Virtual no, painting? No, no. If I, if I had to do virtual learning. Okay, so to make sure. <laughs> oh, like, the story changes. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, well, sorry, I'm, I have something on the screen that blended over but yeah i would just look up at them and be like i know kung fu <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so real quick i know we don't normally do uh shout outs or anything but this is where sure. I, I this is why i said painting i came across a new youtube channel that it doesn't have a lot yet but i've actually really been enjoying it uh you guys might have probably already even know um it's called enjoy painting more on youtube uh, he has six videos up, um, but it's a lot of like contrast, like using contrast at a um, higher level. Um, I did it. Uh, he he has a video about painting uh, imperial fists uh, using the contrast paints, and I used the same uh, technique on the snake from the uh, Daughters of Cain kill band, uh, kill uh, war band. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that's... Matt's had a rough night and, uh, of painting so far. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it actually turned out really well. I really like it a lot. So yeah, give uh, give him a watch if you like him. Subscribe. I, 
yeah, I, I'm I'm fully okay with doing shout outs. So before we get to my fitness, let's uh, let's backtrack a little bit. Uh, Dave, do you have a shout out? Any anything you want to plug? Uh, any any social media thing that may be new in your life? Oh yes, yes. So I have been finally shamed into joining joining the masses on Twitter. So uh, <laughs> yes, I can be found at uh, Night of the Dave on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> hooray! I, I'm I'm still sad you didn't go with woke roke. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I am not. <laughs> it was too. That was too 2020 for Dave. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's modern ages stuff like that. I can't go with that. There you go. There you go. Uh, Neil, what about you? Did you have a, anything you want to plug while we're here? Anything I want to plug? Content, uh, content creator, someone's Twitter, I mean, whatever you want. Um. Uh, I have uh, posted a video on Twitter of my home table, so this is a little self, uh, shameless uh, self-promotion here. Uh, but if you've seen it, it is, uh, or if you haven't seen it, it is um, basically I hung my boats from uh, the ceiling over top of uh, my carriage-drawn boats over top of my table. And so I, when I'm not playing on the table, I kind of use my table as kind of like a display area. Um, and so that's, that's kind of a permanent addition. I use magnets so I can pop them off of there real quick and throw them right back onto their bases, which are also magnetized. So um, anyway, they haven't fallen yet. And my kids have been running around this house like crazy. So they seem, <laughs> seem to be holding. I'll knock on some wood here. Uh, outside of that. Um, I was to say, Neil, Neil gets a viral, legit viral tweet going in the Wargaming community. And he, he demands more likes and retweets folks that's that's what that was <laughs> just so we're all clear <laughs> so yeah i don't know i was uh i'd love to see uh them reproduce something like that up at warhammer world that'd be awesome but um yeah Ooh, that's what i've been up to. out warhammer world let's see yeah, <laughs> yeah let's see it. let's see some boats hanging from ceilings you can see Neil is icing his shoulder because he's been patting his own back so hard. <laughs> you didn't put that in your fitness. <laughs> well, I will say it kind of goes along with you know um, the tables that we try to produce for battles across the realms um, events and everything. We try to push the limits on tables. Um, we're going to try and do more of that. Um, I'm going to try and do more of that as I'm kind of sitting home. I've been going back to my uh, hobby store recently, um, finally kind of grabbing some of our terrain out of the shop there that we've been, it's just been pretty much sitting on tables around there. And so I'm kind of sprucing it up, building it up here a little bit. And so hopefully um, uh, with, with uh, four players on a single table, it, it offers me a little bit more time to hold, now hold spend on. more time on terrain. Hold, so, on. hold on now. Yeah. So you went from shameless self plug to shameless self plug about the work you're doing about the event <laughs> that people may be listening to this episode first and have no idea what you talked about even though you talk to us three about it regularly so what the hell are you talking about for the people oh, who aren't keeping up not very good radio is it? um oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah um, it is a, an event that I am planning currently that will happen whenever COVID decides to stop happening so Hopefully this spring. We'll see uh, next it's year. It's going to happen uh, when we uh, force you. We're just going to be like, nope, it's... we're done. We're done. We're, we're all done with it. Time to time. So, to play. yeah, it's going to be a multiplayer kind of tribe treachery based uh, event um, with a lot of my own narrative style rules and hopefully some, some fun tables to play on. Uh, nice. Some laid back beer and pretzels kind of fun. So. Right. Okay. So, Neil, mm-hmm. with, with the double. Double shameless plugs. So uh, double whammy. <laughs> double whammy. Uh, I, I, now we'll get to my fitness. It's 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 not. Uh, it's there's a little little change going on. I'm still doing the CrossFit regularly. Um, I'm trying to focus heavily on the skill work. So handstand walks, uh, handstand push-ups, uh, kegels. No, I'm good on those. <laughs> I'm so strong on the. You 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 would. Oh my. You give me some walnuts, and I'll, I'll give you a show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, oh, gosh, look right. at the time. I've got to... <laughs> <laughs> Double unders. Uh, like, all, all the skill stuff, not necessarily the strength stuff in um, CrossFit. I'm trying to really hammer it and get it locked down um, for the 
CrossFit Open, which is happening February of next year, which is kind of like a global sort of competition. You're ranked against everybody that does it. February. Yeah, I'm six month training cycle on this stuff. I'm going pretty hard. Jesus no, I'm uh, not talking about the amount of time you're training. I'm talking about the fucking time they did it. Like why don't they just? Oh, it's also in uh, Wisconsin. There you go. <laughs> oh no, no, it's it's you do it. You do it at your home gym. Like it's it's all uh, online. Yeah, I nope. mean outside Wisconsin, January first. Then <laughs> <laughs> don't forget, CrossFit is a global thing. I mean, healthy lifting's a global thing, Matt. It's. Not, it's not always winter where it's winter for you. You need to you need to broaden those horizons. Uh, I you're acting like there's something beyond the boundaries of America, and the only thing I can think of is Canada, which is even colder. So <laughs> it's always colder. <laughs> oh boy. Um, don't so forget now, to talk about for those of us who don't know Chuck. Yes. How, how does a uh, CrossFit uh, extravaganza or whatever it was called? How does this CrossFit <laughs> competition work? So the CrossFit Open is a yearly event hosted by CrossFit, which is a company, and yeah, that's where the name came from and all that sort of stuff. Um, but it's online ranked, so you sign up. I think it's twenty dollars, and then you get globally ranked. And and what you do is you go to your home gym, and every Friday for I think it's five or six weeks i can't recall probably five uh there's a prescribed workout that is given and everyone in the in this event does it on friday and coaches uh at your your gym uh will watch you and track your your reps so it's it's literally like them watching you do the whole workout and they'll do it for everybody so like there's multiple coaches per gym obviously so you know does the when you're doing wall balls like you squat down with a 20 pound <laughs> medicine ball and you, you stand up and you throw it and you have to hit it with uh you know a, a 10 foot line and if you yeah, don't hit it it's no cables. rep <laughs> exactly back to the kegels um but like e- each rep <laughs> each rep is 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 judged and if you miss it miss doing the the rep properly they call no rep so then you just have to do it again essentially um but then you're ranked on time and amount of weight and various things and then you're ranked globally so that's the CrossFit Open explained poorly. It's like uh, it's like ITC rankings, like where if you're me <laughs> and you play at an ITC event, you will be ranked. However, <laughs> you will be nowhere ITC. near the top. <laughs> so, <laughs> you will be ranked. Right. Actually, <laughs> that's the that's the interesting thing. Why I'm really focusing on these skills because uh, doing sometimes doing what like you might get to a workout and near the end you have to do like. 20 ring muscle ups if i can get one ring muscle up usually that means i could jump up in placing by like a hundred thousand because there's so many like ring muscle ups are hard so if i can get to do it like that's a, like these skills are what really separates people sometimes uh i can usually keep up with most of the weight in a crossfit workout without issue it's the skills that gets me because if i'm honest i should probably be a power lifter <laughs> and just move heavy things up and down up and down that's what my body's kind of built for but i i'm trying to do crossfit right now so and then the other big thing in my uh, fitness life is ever since last Sunday after our uh, Tayrathi Invitational, which will be the core topic of tonight's show, uh, I was like, okay, time to start my diet. I had my fun, had all my beers, uh, had all the beers. I had so many beers. I still have beer left and I can't drink it because <laughs> I... Not with that attitude. Yeah, no, with that attitude. Because uh, <laughs> I decided to go on to... Um, not super heavy, but like a, a more restrictive diet than I have been. I've been maintaining my weight pretty well for the past year. And I'm like, yeah, I kind of want to trim down because it'll help me with my skills in CrossFit. Um, I I know I have abs. I just want to see them. <laughs> but I have to drop like 20 pounds. So we're on that race right now. So, uh, yeah, I've been it, – it's okay. Like the first three, four days was pretty rough in any diet. But now it's just kind of like, you know, I – I wake up in the morning, I, I track all my food. I don't track my exercise, actually, because I'm keeping that as just bonus calories lost throughout the day. Because usually with maintaining, I would track the workout, and it allows me to eat a little bit more. But now it's... And I, I've had a, I had a few harsh lessons lessons where um, my mother, very kindly, every year she buys me a bag of Halloween double-stuffed Oreos, which are the only Oreos I will eat. And uh, I was like, I woke up, I had a cup of coffee, and... I was like, I'm going to have some Oreos. So I had six Oreos. 
you know, that's, that's, <laughs> yeah. Um, that's your calories for the day. <laughs> for the week. Not, <laughs> thankfully, no, it's not, it's not 2000, but yeah, it's pretty close to, uh, 450 after the milk. <laughs> so I was like, uh, anything that, if it's not 2,000, Chuck, it's because you're forgetting some rounding error. That's 2,000 calories. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm tracking it pretty religiously, so yeah. Um, that's where that's at. And as far as my shout-out, I want to shout-out two content creators. I'm not going to shout-out me because I don't consider myself a content creator. And I'm not going to shamelessly <laughs> self-plug because I don't have a tweet that went viral. <laughs> um, I want to shout-out Doug over at Two Up Tough um, because he's right now making the endeavor to go full time with his content creation. And oh wow, good for him! Yeah, he does wonderful content. It's definitely more on the narrative and lore side of things. Uh, he does branch out elsewhere, but it, it's definitely my jam as far as uh, the type of content I like to watch. So uh, go check him out, support him. He's going to be doing a lot of huge things soon. I, I have no doubt. And then the second thing I want to plug is just because I. They're one of the few podcasts that I will listen to like multiple times, and, and Neil, I know you'll probably agree with me on this. And, and they they quickly became one of my favorite. Um, and uh, it, it's Legends of the Painty Men. Oh God, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> they're they're hilarious. They're funny. Uh, I, I they could they, I that I it doesn't have to be Warhammer. I just listen to those guys talk. Um, oh, yeah. And I don't. I, I, I get to talk to uh, Andrew via social media on occasion uh, here and there. We, we both we both ha- we both have a, a love of Daughters of Cain, um, posteriors, and and working out. So <laughs> <laughs> it's like instant respect right there. But uh, uh, yeah, he's just a really cool guy. Any, anytime I get to interact with him, it's he's always super sincere and, and uh, fun. So um, definitely check out Two Up Tough and Legends of the Painting Man. So. There. Legends of the Painting Man. I was trying to introduce Hayward to over there on um, our way to the uh, Tayrathi Invitational that morning, and I was trying to find the episode where they were talking about um, the witch elves farting into the um, um, the Caradron Overlord masks. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that was. So there's oh, a little was, taste of that. That yeah, was a while so ago. Good. Oh, that's so oh, that good. was one of the first ones. I couldn't find it. Yeah. That was uh, so good. Yeah, they're and they're one of the. I, I usually I, I will say I usually don't subscribe to, like, I I will do donations on occasion for people doing content. I, you know I'll do that sort of stuff. I usually don't subscribe to like a Patreon, um, but theirs I've considered just to go hang out with them while they paint, because <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> like it's it's I'm sure it's a riot, but, um, but yeah, so that's that's my fitness uh, outside of just doing i just do stuff all the time um <laughs> with it so let's get on to the hobby talk so neil now now would be a great time to talk about um your splendid army of the boats for sure but uh, well, the boats are, so boats are done now um after i uh, did that little uh, <laughs> and honestly for as much uh, as that thing got retweeted it was kind of funny because it's a there's a couple of pieces of cotton um some string and some magnets and that was that <laughs> I did about 20 minutes. Um, but uh, now that that is done, I'm building more terrain, painting more terrain uh, at this point. Um, working with my daughter right now because she uh, was gifted uh, very nicely uh, by a guy named uh, Mike out of uh, Pittsburgh. Uh, gave her a bunch of his extra Iden FB kit. So um, she is very thankful if you're listening. <laughs> and, uh, and she's been working on that. So I've been helping her build some models there. What else have I been doing? Oh, I built all those Chaos Warriors. I did get some prize support from the Tarathian Invitational, so I got some uh, old-school Chaos Warriors that I added to my Slaves to Darkness. So I built those with my son, who's six and a half years old. This will tell you how far uh, Games Workshop models have come in technicality. <laughs> my son was able to put together the Chaos Warriors. My daughter is... And, and I struggle with the Deepkin models. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So it is, uh, yeah, just uh, the, the good old days when it was a body and a head and, and two arms. And that was, that was it. That was your model. And, and the arm could move like a clock hand. It could just rotate that weapon. You went three, you went it's six, just, nine. <laughs> it was a round ball that went into a hole and went boop, and then it was done. So I, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I, I really like the, the, the dynamic look of models nowadays, but... 
there is a certain part of me that misses that <laughs> level of just do whatever you want, you know, right. like, because mm-hmm. that's what I, I grew, uh, you know, I started with Space Marines and the just the simple amount of creativity you had with like two hands that were set in a certain way, but there was no joint in the shoulder. Um, yeah, it's like I feel like you you really have to want it if Actually, you want to goof the pose now. <laughs> to, to that point, um, you, you know, everyone knows how Facebook will just, uh, if you use Facebook, will just remind you, like, hey, here's a post from, like, five years ago. And apparently four years ago, I was painting wood elves. And <laughs> it showed me, a, actually it was today, it showed me a conversion I had. It was just an extra horse I had and an extra pair of legs. Like, I, it's all kit bashed. It was a wood elf sorceress pretty much like surfing a horse <laughs> because because <laughs> i could and it was like oh, okay and you know <laughs> like the creativity was there it's like that's what the models were, were doing for me so. yeah so that's that's pretty much uh my hobby it's just kind of building painting terrain and helping my kids right now just trying to get them interested trying to <laughs> i've actually had them start watching the uh, hobbit movies so we're, we're really trying to just really ingrain this into them at a young age. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, if you ever want me to come out and teach them uh, Middle Earth strategy battle games, <laughs> they got you. <laughs> See, Matt, I was hoping you'd say that you'd come out and teach them how to sing, what is that, uh, that, that dwarf song, the Misty Mountain something? Yeah, the Misty Mountains, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's we'll, need, we'll need a little... Uh, We'll sample that for the, the outro, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. We, listen, I chose something random off YouTube that sounded pretty decent. That's that's our intro music this week. We'll, and outro. We'll see how it goes. Uh, <laughs> uh, we missed our opportunity to have our, our intro music be Neil's breathing on his Caradron video. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. Is I make that area of my house look a whole lot bigger than what it is because that phone is like right up against my face to be able to move around there. <laughs> so mouth breathing straight into that microphone. Yeah. So, there you go. It's like, oh yeah. Ah, oh, smell those, smell those witch elf farts in our masks. <laughs> Maybe that's what was going on. Maybe it wasn't. <laughs> Let's, we're, Matt. We're gonna save you maybe for last because I think yours is gonna go off on a bit of a tangent. So we'll, we'll shift over to Dave real quick on your hobby. Um. Well, I've been uh, actually playing a bit of the terrain game myself. Uh, I'm I'm finally finishing up my my last Morn Fangs so that I will have uh, all of my Beast Claw painted. But uh, the only other two uh, not fully painted models that I took to the delightful Tayrathian Invitational then will be my custom butcher and my uh, great maw pot. So uh, I got to get those done, but I've also been uh, working on uh, stuff for my table here at home. Yeah, so, you did just do a nice layout of everything. Picture you sent to us in our, our little group chat. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I got some help from, from Tommy, my eight-year-old. So he uh, he wanted to help me set up the, uh, the display um we're uh, we're showing off the table to uh, my mother-in-law, who I'm sure will really appreciate it, uh, and my brother-in-law, who had uh, long, long ago actually played uh, 40k for for a hot minute at some point. So he might actually appreciate it. <laughs> he might. There you go. That's that's a fun place to be in in the hobby. Uh, Matt, yeah. we we will go to you next. Let's let's get, <laughs> let, let's let's. Let's air some grievances. He says, resigned Let's, to it. Yeah. Well, like I say it's not it's nothing too bad. It's just it's a bad day for me to start trying stuff new. Like <laughs> so so on the non frustrating side, you know, I picked up as always the new Underworld War bands. Um and uh so I put those together, primed them. It's probably a little too humid for me to prime, but I did it anyways, and so the uh the primer dusted a little bit, so uh, when doing the witch elves, the uh, I was doing the flesh and trying to do flesh, uh, smooth flesh on a uh, primed model that is dusted, not. <laughs> so they're a little tanner than I would like, but it's not the end of the world. Um, they're like I so said, they're turning out okay. Um, but then the thing that I started today was 
the basis for my Lumineth. I was trying to get that started. Um, and that has been, I don't know. Again, I don't know if it's just that, you know, the, the, the pseudo Monday after a three day weekend that just mm. got me. <laughs> but, uh, so I started off cause I wanted to try and emulate the stone that they always show, like either for the terrain that they do for the Lumineth or even the stone that they have, like the stone ruins they have, um, Teclas and the the Sphinx uh, on. Oh, the one Selenar stepping on, yeah. Yeah, and um, that just, uh, that is, I don't know if it's working or it's just, <laughs> <laughs> I, like I said, I'm just, I, I started off by doing it like that blue wash to get that blue hue in there that they have. Um, and then I tried dry brushing with, let me see, I tried dry brushing with Carrick Stone, didn't like it. Then I did um, Screaming Skull, didn't like it. Then I did Wraithbone, didn't like it. Then I did White Scar, and then that made it white again. So then I went back to Screaming Bell, <laughs> or, uh, Screaming Skull. Uh, <laughs> and then that was too dark, so then I did a little bit of Wraithbone, and that was too too much. <laughs> and so, uh, so Matt, at this point, at this point, how thick is the paint on your model <laughs> well it's fine because this is one of the thick bases that i couldn't roll down uh smoother oh i guess i should back up it's and now start. thicker yeah so so what i was doing for my bases is i bought the elven roller off of green stuff world uh that they specifically made for lumineth because part of the design is actually the bull um and i thought that that was I was like, okay, I have to do that. And my plan was, uh, I'll do that. I'll put that down on the base, get that to look like a nice weathered stone. I'll put some of the GW dirt grit over top of it uh, to make it look like, you know, it's weathered and there's, you know, it's kind of a, the ruins are a little buried. And then I found uh, a separate person that had like these little flower clusters, these bright uh, little bushels of flowers that I figured I could put on each base to indicate because there's four different colors and I figured I'm never going to have four or I'm never going to have more than four of one unit. So each unit gets one color flower so I can indicate where everyone's from. Um, and so now I'm sitting there looking at the grit that I bought because I had bought uh, Armageddon Dunes and that's a little too yellowy, I think. It's a little too yellow, a little too mustardy. So now I'm thinking maybe I should have went with a darker brown to kind of break up the beige, like the light beige of the base, because I'm going with the the orange, um, the orange of the Lumineth. So I'm thinking maybe I should go with the darker brown to be a little bit more of a natural dirt and kind of tone down the brightness and then also kind of pull up the muteness of the base. Actually. What you should do with the astrogranite, actually, that's what I use for um, uh, my lumineth base. But wash it and then dry brush it. Oh, absolutely. Um, so and and it definitely takes to whatever wash you put to it. So you can make it as dark as you want. So you can make it not look yellow at all. You can just put a nice uh, the Armageddon. Or yeah, yeah, the Armageddon. I'm sorry, I said astrogranite. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, the astrogranite is what I normally use for everything uh, because I love just going dark. And getting it done and getting and moving on with my day. <laughs> <laughs> the complete opposite of Neil. <laughs> See, Matt, Matt, you need to be back in the days of uh, flocking. A little bit of glue, well, put it put it in the mm-hmm. little little grass tough thing, give it a little, little shake, done. So that's what my um, my gray knights are actually inspired by you because I bought went out and bought uh, tea bags. Oh yeah, except I painted you the one and, model. Yeah. Yeah. And I so I did that with him, and I did that with another one of my guys, and uh, that looked really cool. But the flocking just fell off immediately. No matter how what I did, whether I used more glue or less glue, it just fell off immediately. You need, you need to um, after you put it down, let it dry. You need to put a layer of watered down PVA over top of it, like because that's that's what Steve Herner does to his tables at Holy Havoc with his flock, and they're flawless. You cannot break them. <laughs> I mean, you probably could. Don't try, but they're solid. <laughs> Yeah. Do not go to a holy event and try and break the tables. That is not recommended. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
the rest of the people there will kill you before Steve even realizes. <laughs> yeah, you you will be the new table. <laughs> Matt, for your, uh, Matt, for your stone, you... have you ever tried uh, Terminator stone? It is my favorite paint for uh, any type of stone. I'm, I'm sorry. So trying to finish up final highlight. We're, we're gonna, we got to give you... We got to give you a quick little 40k thing here. How do you say that paint? Terminatus, Terminatus, Terminatus. There you oh, go. You Last this? one, Is Terminatus, Terminatus. Terminatus. Think of Exterminatus, but Terminator. Terminatus, Terminators. <laughs> Terminatus stone in space. How dare you get 40k <laughs> more wrong? <laughs> Neil, you're you're banned. You're Man. banned from something. I don't know what, but you're banned. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, well, Matt, wow. did you try? Did you try the recipe that I uh, sent you out of the uh, that I recommended out of the Forbidden Power book? Yes, I just replaced the um, the wash mixture with the blue because that's the route I wanted to go. But uh, yeah, I, I was using the screaming bell, and I think the problem was is I think I'm just going to have to be super careful, and I'm going to have to make it so the rest of the base. Only the crevices get touched with the blue. Um, I yeah, I don't know. It's gonna be. Here's, I'm gonna have to do a lot of experimenting. Here's the trick. <laughs> here's the trick. You take you take some Drakenhof Nightshade wash. That's the blue wash. Yeah. Yep. You put some on a wet palette. You can put some water. Yep. Fifty fifty. One to one ratio. You wash that son of a bitch up. All right. Then you get a nice nice old like thick dry brush for dry brushing all right you get some ooth one gray and and you get there and you just start taking that paint off on that paper towel or that table whatever you do and as soon as you think you're done you go a little bit longer and then you just start hammering (laughs) away at it and i guarantee it's gonna look great i've never watered down a wash ever (laughs) <laughs> well, so I actually yeah, my, that shit uh, goes on thick. <laughs> so I actually have a uh, I have a uh, pre mixed pot because I used a um, two to one ratio of medium to the blue wash on my stormcast. So I already had that mixed up, and that's what I did. Yeah, I put it on super light, but it was over a white primer, so it just the whole model just looked. Well, okay, I mean, you, you you can go thick. <laughs> and then just you get that dry brush net with one gray. It's just like magic. I promise. Yeah. I promise. But uh, let's see. My, I, I guess, do you have any more hobby? Or is that, is that the frustration? Is it out? Do you feel better? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I still want to kill it, though. <laughs> okay, that's fine. You can kill it. Uh, my hobby, I'm going to have to weirdly backtrack here. So I just finished painting up the Daughters of Cain Underworld's Warband. I'm working on some Lumineth. Uh, kind of like a a hybrid kit bash. Actually, I decided to take some of my old hi- old high elf models and use bits from the new Lumineth and kind of blend them together uh, for a couple reasons. One, I'm funneling my funds elsewhere right now. Uh, hobby dollars are going into you know home repair, getting more gym fitness stuff, more you know pr- stocks preparations like. So, you know, the next time that Toilet Paper decides to be shorting because the the world goes crazy for no apparent reason, uh, I don't have to worry about that. You know, like, not, not going prepper, but I'm going, hey, we should probably have some water. We should probably have some toilet paper. Let's have some canned goods, you know, like that. And while I'm at it, let's fix up the house. Um, so in order to save money and not spend a crazy amount, because, dear God, the Lumineth are expensive. It's be- they're beautiful. <laughs> Dear God, they're expensive. I'm going to kind of blend some of my old high elves into it. Um, n- no more than half, per se. But like, I'm also like very going to be very slow grow with this army. Like I said, I, I have my first 1,000 points planned out. I have a 2,000-point plan, um, but that will be throughout the next year, and then eventually I'll add Teclas and go from there. Because um, I, I realize I don't need to rush it. I don't need to have it done. I'm, I'm still paying Dodger Kane for fun here and there, so... Um, Lumineth will come as they will, but uh, yeah, I, I am excited for them. I, I'll say, I, I, I still need to fix Teclas's face. <laughs> <laughs> it looks I, like it looks like my grandma took to the air. <laughs> <laughs> she was very angry about something. Yeah, I, 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 said, I, I see what they went with was his face. I'd rather him be prettier. I'll, I want him, <laughs> I want him to be prettier, so I'm gonna make him prettier. Um, anyway, Javi, that's what I'm talking about. 
Uh, oh, I... <laughs> Pay. Yeah, hobby. So go to mypatriotsupply.com and get a year's of supply <laughs> in a bucket. <laughs> I got 10,000 pounds of MREs coming. Well, outlast these commies. Um. <laughs> <laughs> One uh, million kilocalories of food for twelve ninety nine. Um, So I painted up uh, uh, three tables. Uh, well, they were somewhat painted already, but, you know, put basing in the... And they weren't happy stuff. about it. His neighbors were very upset that he broke in. <laughs> <laughs> now, I painted up three tables worth of terrain for the Tehrathi Invitational. Um, some of it was new, some of it was old, just repurposed. Uh, most exciting bit out of all of it is I have my Daughters of Cain table done, and I'm in love with it. It's... I, I keep making it more and more expensive by just adding statues of kits... <laughs> And heroes to it, but at this point, <laughs> I'm, yeah, I like I don't care. The, 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 Neil, you're flying airship. This is mine. People don't care yeah. about it as much because it's not as cool as your airships. I, I won't lie, but to I me, this know. I don't. I think that looks. I thought it looked amazing, and if you keep going with that, on it, you're gonna have to bring all that terrain to to our event. That's gonna have to be a table. Well, so. we'll see. Are you gonna have display boards? Because also, some the reason I'm doing some of this stuff is it's also gonna be part of my new display board for Daughters of Cain. It's kind of dual purposing. That's what magnets are for, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure the deal was everybody but Chuck was allowed to bring a display board to the event. I think that's in the pack. Oh man! <laughs> All right, then I'm wearing a dress again. I got nothing about display boards, so. Yeah. All right. Hey, listen, man. I'll tell you right now. You might want to keep cosplay off the table because I'm still really tempted at those gargants and I right now have a good good gargan body type going right now. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, come in my uh, come in my underwear and strap a hubcap to my stomach and <laughs> there's gonna be that gate breaker one with just the black mask over his face. Oh jeez. <laughs> yeah. else. There's a couple so special Matt, shops that look like they would sell that along the way. I'm sure you find that. Matt, what you really have to do is also like somehow attach a cabbage patch doll to yourself, running away with its arms up in the air. Oh, that'd be brilliant! <laughs> yes, absolutely. That's awesome. So now, that's that's the way to do it. <laughs> um. Oh, I ran a uh, a eight person three man invitational. That's also counts as hobby. Let's count that. Uh, I had some wonderful people show up, um, and Dave. and Dave was there too, yeah. <laughs> as well as Dave. <laughs> but no, um, yeah, that was fun. And I, actually, I, I count this up. I made a uh, a WWE style belt for the champion to take home for the year, and so yeah, I'm I'm hoping to make it better next year by actually having a real one, like engraved. But also at the same time, it's like I kind of <laughs> like the no, silliness of I like the like one is. Keep it. I know it's I like. like it keep... <laughs> I mean, shout out to to uh, the old skills I, I had from cosplay and and from what some friends had taught me to uh, be able to make that thing look halfway decent. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, we'll segue that right into talking about today's topic, which is just kind of like our thoughts and opinions. Uh, and you guys can tell me how great I am, how wonderful I am. Um, shower me with love and accolades uh, about the Tayrathi Invitational. This is this is a me episode. Let me uh, <laughs> let, let me go first. <laughs> so, oh god! Wait, wait wait wait! Before before you do that, Neil, let's remember that Chuck made a big deal about not patting his himself on the back with the shout outs because he now. set aside two hours. Yeah, <laughs> that's for, for one long shout out. Here. Dave, yeah. Dave. Don't give out the bits live on air, all right? <laughs> ah. but, so um, my experience was coming into the event. Um, so this was, like you said, actually, eight person event. Actually, could you explain the event for people as well, please? It was an eight person invitational event. Tell me if I get anything wrong. Eight people so, were there. That means eight people were invited specifically. Um, I think all, all the the invitees were able to show up for it. Mm -hmm. It was outdoors, so we did it underneath tents, four tables, um, a pretty good amount of terrain on each one of those tables, too. <laughs> so <laughs> even had a giant castle, which took up, what, half of the board on one of those? Uh, yeah, yep. Which, which did have a special rule, had a Kool-Aid man rule. So if you said, oh, yeah, you could actually bust your army right through it. Yep. And ignore the terrain. <laughs> Which was one of the better rules in the pack, I have to say. Um, but 
um, just overall for me, um, from the planning for the event, uh, bringing, going to see Matt the night before, hanging out at his place, then going and uh, going into the event, it felt like, even though it was eight people, it felt like it had all the accoutrement of like a, a big event, right? I got to see all my buddies, got to hang out with my buddies, got to play, you know, three three great games of Warhammer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, three great games, one, one and two, and um, you know, just it's just the feeling of how the event moved and everything, which is very laid back. It was just it was just a great time. I mean, for people in, in this particular environment right now, I mean, if you can still squeeze in some of these outdoor events before it starts getting cold, go do it. Fine. If you got eight people that you can do one of these events with, do it. It was a lot of fun, and mm-hmm. it really felt like a like a a real big event. I mean, if I go to a one day or whether there's 50 people or 24, right, I'm only getting three games. Right? And so the fact that I'm getting to play, you know, all my buddies there and I'm going to have a good time regardless. I mean, really, I would, I would just really encourage other people to try and do this, but um, I'll, I'll stop talking. Let somebody else talk about it. But actually, before, before we do go off, you need real quick. I know um, you work in a hospital, correct? Mm-hmm. Um, so you admittedly, they said it won't get into any politics, but um, you are more concerned about, uh, you know, being protected and not spreading or catching anything than, than any of us, the rest of us, from from mm-hmm. what I could gather. <laughs> How did you feel mm-hmm. at the event overall, just on, on that front? I felt comfortable because we were outside. You know, me personally, for my, you know, I try to keep my distance from everybody as much as I could as well. Also, you know, when I before I went to go see Matt, you know, Matt gave me a little bit of the... Uh, uh, a little bit of background about what he was doing, you know, and everything too, because, you know, I worry about bringing anything to anybody else as, as much as going and getting some something from somebody else too, you know? So, um, but I felt pretty comfortable with the way everything was set up with there only being eight people, um, you know, keeping it small like that and outdoors, you know, when it's inside to use the bathroom and that was it, you know? So, um, yeah, I felt pretty comfortable there. If I was running one in my backyard, I'd probably have masks on everybody, um, to make that mandatory, but you know, yeah, well, that's also because you okay live with filthy it. Ohio. That's, <laughs> hey, hey, that's hey, you guys are worse than us right now in Pennsylvania. Thank you very much. <laughs> but no, I felt pretty good. Listen, don't lump us in with Philadelphia, all right? You... <laughs> <laughs> They're on a whole other side. They, they might as well be another state. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Dave, your thoughts. Oh my God. I that was the best tournament I have played in in years. Which to be fair, I haven't played in a tournament in years, <laughs> but um, it was it was just an amazing experience. Just uh, from even from the point when you first sent out the the pack and, and it was clear that the intent here was uh, have a story and have fun. Uh, it it was um, just an amazing experience, minus how salty I got when Matt's dice uh, were clearly, clearly Superior favoring. Tactics. Uh, <laughs> ooh, yes. You you've yes. Already, you played uh, Matt with Matt, Matt. Matt brought Gotrek. All right, you've played Gotrek <laughs> once before. Did you still run yes. into him like a fool? No, not really. But uh, he got a really nice charge off two different times. <laughs> And then was just like, vroom. I did get two I, separate ten inch charges off. Oh. So. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. So I did nothing to him. Like my only I regret, mean, basically, is that there's no rules to kill the mop pot. All right, <laughs> <laughs> yes. can't just tip it Still over. Still had a model left on the table. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but. I mean, the the gaming was was fantastic, and and like Neil said, it was a great group of guys. Uh, I I went up like a lamb to the slaughter against uh, against Bill Souza in round round one, uh, knowing I had uh, no chance. Like, uh, and uh, but you know what? I had a hell of a time. I had I had a great time playing him. Great time playing Matt, minus my salty tears. So uh, I mean, they uh, tasted great, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> I I really wish, Matt. You know, in in this day and age with with COVID and everything, you should not have licked the tears off my face. <laughs> it was worth it, man. That might, that might be a little bold. That, that might be a little bold. So. <laughs> uh, 
the tears, the tears of war gamers are the cure for COVID. <laughs> <laughs> I will say too. That, that was a. Uh, there are three players who played in this tournament. Chuck obviously ran it. Um, what were all of our records? I believe we were all <laughs> one and two. <laughs> yep. One and two. Yep, now we yep. did. Nobody finished last. And while I did do some shameless self promotion earlier. I will say there was a trophy for last place, Ooh. and um, that trophy was was taken from a conversion, if we can call it that, um, that I made in, in years past of a, uh, a witch elf uh, cauldron, and uh, the bottom is like this block of wood that was painted up. It's, it's pine just wood derby trophy. style. It looked pine wood derby style. It's it, really, really bad. I, Especially when you take off all the other stuff. What I something. what I loved about that conversion, though, Neil, is you had the uh, old metal cauldron on it, the old metal mm-hmm. statue of Cain, but somehow you had the brand new cauldron wheels. <laughs> yeah, I had. To, yeah, I actually bought those off the internet to stick okay. onto this block. Of wood. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Like said, Went it, on the old bits world there and found it. <laughs> it served its purpose for sure. There's no doubt that it, it got some games on the table. Um, oh my god! Listen, but that came into my possession whenever I bought your old Daughters of Cain stuff. Mm-hmm. And the best part was, is like I ripped everything off of that. The bits, I'm like, okay, in my bits box, all that sort of stuff. And I threw it in the top of my tool chest. And I don't know what I was doing. Like that week before the event, I was looking through my tool chest for something. I don't remember what. Probably like a hammer and nail to hang like a picture or something. And I just saw it sticking out of the back, and I was just like, "Oh, I forgot you existed." <laughs> I, I, At first, you thought it was like a door stopper. Like, no, what is this? <laughs> no. I, as soon as I saw it, I re- I remembered exactly where it was from. I'm like, I'm doing something. <laughs> <laughs> and and I I want to point out separate from that the uh, unsung hero of the event was Norm from the Toy Soldier with his prize support that oh, was uh, a, sure. an amazing surprise uh, and and Chuck uh, you uh, treated us all like kings and it was fantastic. Well, yeah, huge shout out. Well, shout out to two people. Um, one uh, club, my clubmate and neighbor Ben, for loaning me the big tent as well as helping me run the event, also known as he grilled the food while I drank beer and pretended to actually do something as a TO, because none of you had questions. <laughs> Which was also one of the criteria of who I would invite to this first event. Like, okay, people won't ask me questions. <laughs> Done. Um, and, and very importantly, shout out to uh, Norm, who runs the Toy Soldier Gallery in my hometown here, of Lincoln, near Pennsylvania. Uh, you can check him out at toysoldiergallery.net. Um, he's been in the wargaming game longer than any of us. You could probably put at least two of us together, and he's been in the game longer than <laughs> us. But yeah, he pulled out. Um, how much? It was probably like two hundred fifty dollars of prize support, three hundred dollars. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. It was everyone got a prize. He gave me eight things. Yeah, and I just randomly gave. And them they, away. they were not insubstantial. Like I, I got. Got the Silask model. That's that's a fifty dollar retail model, and it's mm-hmm. just for for making a three hour drive out to Ligonier. And so, Norm, thank you oh so much. Oh, yeah. uh, that's that that fantastic. Is a, is a jewel in the mountains. <laughs> he he is he is he is he He's is the, the heart Hawkins of the mountain. Stone. Yes, yes, <laughs> the heart of the mountain. <laughs> and tell Norm we said that. I'd, I'd be interested to see what his reaction was. <laughs> yeah, what's funny is Norm is also, and, and he'll, he'll admit to this, he's not the tallest person. Um, he also has a nice beard. So I guarantee you he's going to cackle, <laughs> or not cackle, but like grin and smile like Gimli in the scene from Two Towers when I tell him that. <laughs> um, but yeah, well, I know, okay, so two, two out of the three people in this podcast had a great time. Matt? Hell yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, <laughs> Triple. So, I mean, like, so so for me, I was sitting there trying to figure out what's, because originally the plan was to use Lumina, but then GW unfortunately had to uh, delay the release, so I was sitting there looking at what else I could make and do, and I was, I was going to bring my Stormcast, and then I played them once against Dave, once against another friend, 
And I just, I felt like I was climbing uphill the entire game. And it was like, if I got a win in, it was luck. <laughs> it was just some good rolls. And that was all it was. So I wasn't. Hey, that's my play style, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so I was like, I was like, well, I'd like to bring something a little bit. Cause like, I need to bring the hardest list I can to be uh, uh, casual with everyone else. So, <laughs> so I figured, well, Fire Slayers people, you know, are saying that they're doing real good, and I and I'm familiar with them at this point because I played them enough. Um, and I was like, oh, but I, in order to be competitive, I would need like another sixty Hearth Guard Berserkers. <laughs> and I was and I was like, or I can bring a Gotrek. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I've been looking for a reason to paint Gotrek because I paint best when I have a deadline. Um, so I, I painted him up and honestly, he turned out to be probably yeah, one of the best models I painted in a while. He's beautiful. Um, I got to, I, I, li- I watched Vince, uh, Vince Ventrolo's, uh, video on fine details and tattoos. And so I did the little, like the, the like kind of the cross mark tattoo he has on his pec on on the uh on the box um again no golden demon but i was very pleased with the results um and like i said i did i went one and two um but i i definitely had more fun pushing gotrick around and seeing people go okay i can't move my (laughs) i can't just move my men forward i have to figure out what to do about that 12 inch of destruction (laughs) (laughs) Um, and like I said, most of the time it was, I put him on last and I just put him in the dead center. Like, (laughs) (laughs) um, and I said with, with Dave, he was polite enough, uh, to give me, um, the one thing I've always wanted in a tournament, uh, to completely wipe my opponent off the table. Uh, (laughs) <laughs> now I want to point out that that technically speaking, going into that, I think it was that fourth round, I actually had the uh, yep. victory points lead uh, with absolutely no chance of holding on to it, <laughs> <laughs> and and then that uh, that uncontested fifth battle round, it turns out, uh, it got you the comfortable win. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I almost had it. So I, we had a point on on his back end and. I had killed everything around it, and I was a half inch away from <laughs> capturing it. And then I realized that if I if I if I got real lucky, I could move Gotrek over, and on a ten inch charge, I'd get over to his his general that was cleaning up my Volkite. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to capture the point. <laughs> That's the most important thing. Next turn, or I'm just going to walk away. Yeah. Whoosh! <laughs> <laughs> Captain Dum Dum strikes again. <laughs> Leroy Jenkins. Yeah. Uh, thankfully, I got a good run roll on, uh, on another unit that was able to run up and capture that as well. So. <laughs> uh, and then, and then the other shining moment I had was cause this. This is the first event that I brought my the forge with me. Um, most of the times, I feel like the forge is is more of just like a, I don't know, so it's like a red herring of sorts, um, because you only benefit when a priest is nearby and you don't exactly have enough points in the army to have an extra priest just wandering about. Um, but with this, with Gotrek, I did have an extra points for a priest to be walking about. Uh, but yeah, you know, so then whenever I was on the on the match with the with the castle so this is they have the this is like the first one of the models before they were worrying about like oh you have to do this this and this and this before you can place a model mine's just one inch from terrain and one inch from an objective uh wholly within my territory i think within six inches of a priest so i literally put it one inch from the gateway of the castle the only true (laughs) opening to this castle wall of half the table yeah, and so I put my Volkite on the inside on the uh, on the objective in there, made it so that they covered a nine inch bubble, so uh, the Skaven player Alex couldn't drop in, and um, and then I protected the other walls with Volkite or with the Hearthguard, and uh, held it the entire game. <laughs> <laughs> 
withheld the siege. That's good. Mm -hmm. well, we want to uh, kind of go through some of our games a little bit here. I know we don't normally do that kind of thing, but we can maybe step through since there's only three of them. Yeah. Maybe yeah. some game recaps. What the? Do you guys want to do quick game recaps or just uh, give give a deeper recap of your favorite game? Well, well considering I, that I've already done my favorite recaps, uh, the let me just do a quick recap of my game one with okay. um, my good friend Mike, who every time we play, we have an amazing game. He brought um, he brought the Deepkin, and I was super worried about eels. Uh, rightfully so. <laughs> um, I was able to 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 charge his eels, so it wasn't too bad of a problem. But then again, eels on the back line came charging in, and <laughs> we we came up with the new term, eels up the butt. <laughs> Solid. Uh, and he won that uh, forthwith. <laughs> we'll find that on the internet somewhere. Just saying. <laughs> I would like yeah. you to go. Don't go search ahead. for that term, kids. Yeah. You should search for it. Go to Google, search <laughs> eels up the butt. <laughs> Type that in and press I feel lucky. <laughs> yes. Kind of <laughs> Don't worry about putting AOS. Don't worry about Deepkin. None of that. Just <laughs> Actually, if you put in Deepkin, that probably gives you something else. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to go deep, that's fine. Kin, too far. Just. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it depends on your state, really. I mean, that's... I, I I also ran into those eels in my third game, so yeah, in a very similar way too. So yeah, <laughs> and that's one thing. What was really funny was, so again, you know, the hearth guard are known to be super defensive, and the eels are known to be super offensive. And I ran into the same thing with with uh, Dave in, in our game. Dave and Mike are sitting there going like oh my god, I can't believe I'm not doing any damage. And on my side, I'm going like, oh my god, I can't believe they're doing so much damage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, I lost three hearth guard. Holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> Pack it in, boys. We're done. <laughs> Which, again, whenever you only have 20 on the table, <laughs> losing three to four is a big deal. <laughs> hey, b before we get off the uh, topic of uh, eels... I just want to. I want to give another quick shout out uh, to to our clubmate Cole, who's also at this event. He brought his corn. He always plays corn. Um, but uh, I've been talking to him and sending him memes that he should play IDK. So if you're listening, Cole, make sure you're playing IDK. Make sure you're building lists with the eels. All right. Okay. All right. Back to the show. <laughs> when I played the, I got to play those eels and Mike. Um, now, my list was uh, all boats. I had, I had seven gun haulers, a frigate, an ironclad, a smattering of some guys with rifles that don't matter, and uh, one guy with a hammer. So, <laughs> <laughs> the engine master, he was my general. But really, the, it was all to bring the boats. And uh, so when I played him in that third game, you know, I, I, I he gave me first turn. I moved all my stuff up. And I'm like, well, this idiot put all this stuff within range. <laughs> like, all this important stuff. I was gonna blow it out of the water. He goes, uh, he goes, no, you you have to shoot the ones that are closest. Said, what are you talking about? <laughs> I've never played. Right? No, he goes, no, no, you have to shoot the ones that are that are closest. And there's all these like, you know, one wound guys, and I'm like, oh. Some of them I didn't even take out the entire unit for God's sake. So. Um, <laughs> And then I made another mistake where I put the gun hauler. I'm like, well, this gun hauler over here, you know, he's not going to bring his guys on the back of the board because that's close enough to over there. That's got to be close to nine inches. Well, what you should do if you're a decent gamer is you should probably measure that, make sure that that's actually true. Because uh, I didn't do that. <laughs> As it turns out, you could fit about 12 of those eels right behind me. <laughs> <laughs> Whole lot and of so eels. That's got uh, they came marching across the board. We actually had a really good game. Um, it went back and forth, back and forth. Came down to the fifth battle round where I had to win the battle round or the game was over, and I did not. So he took the game there. <clears throat> was probably going to take it anyway, even if I had run it, but uh, it was officially over at that point. Game before that, um, I played as game two. I played Roger Barker um, of uh, Team USA fame, 
And uh, that one went as predictably uh, it, it should, as he had the daughters of Cain and, and way too many wounds for my boats to do anything about it. Um, I'm sure there are people out there who play um, good competitive carriage on overlords lists um, and are also good pilots of those lists. Um, I am neither of those. <laughs> so, so very quickly, uh, after battle round one, I decided the game was out of reach. And so um, just because I, I wanted to see if I could do it, I tried to take out all of his characters. Uh, and uh, they were all <laughs> on minus two to hit <laughs> so, in the shooting thing. It was awesome. Yep. But I, I did do a number on his army by the time there's a little moral victories that, that I was having with myself. Um, I, I took out quite a bit of his army uh, with those guns, but uh, nah, it was uh, the final score was something I, I think in the 40s when we called it to uh, <laughs> I'm have the point or two somewhere, but literally I think he had 40 points, so something, something egregious. <laughs> so uh, yeah, <clears throat> it was pretty bad, pretty lopsided. Um, game one was against Cole. And Cole uh, was my victory, and this was a, a little bit of hubris on his part. The only uh, army I do know about in this game is Corn. <laughs> so I have a little bit of an advantage there. And he, he modeled a Karajan overlord hanging over top of the, uh, altar. the altar. Altar, yep. <laughs> altar, corn, <laughs> or whatever you want to call it. Um, a shrine, whatever it is. And uh, so, so we effectively rescued that guy after uh, off two bloodthirsters in the first turn, got the second one or the third one in the second turn, and he kept on summoning all sorts of guys here, there, and the other. And, and we were really close on points because one thing my army doesn't do well is uh, capture objectives, which is what you need to do to win the game. But that's you know, <laughs> neither here nor there. That's an important part of this game. So. <laughs> I did wind up skunking him by one objective point, so nice. uh, that's, that's the reason why I got him. But uh, <clears throat> that could have went the other way, too. He came in with the Bloodthirster with the big axe and, and fluffed it pretty good. Still got a bunch of mortal wounds out with, with a six on the wound, which does the exploding mortal wounds all through my army where I had all my boats huddled up. Um, but uh, they, they survived and uh, proceeded to do a shooty shoot. So. so that was my tournament there. Excellent. One and two. Dave, why don't you uh, fill us in right, with, with what we missed from you? So the the last of the one and two heroes here. Uh, so I, I came by mine, uh, as I said, uh, Sousa and Ram, uh, I, and I had my uh, success right at the beginning. I took my general, my Frost Lord on Stonehorn, because I'm playing just a straight, I'm just going to beat the hell out of you Beast Claw list, which got the hell beat out of it twice. Um but uh, just went right up and took out his Great Unclean one of his Nurgle list. Uh, so I thought, oh, I've eviscerated the heart of his list. No, it turns out the heart of his list was the giant masses of Blight Kings. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they were, yeah. So it was good that I took out the Great Unclean one. Uh, I just needed to then roll nothing but sixes for the rest of the game, and then I could have been okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so that I, you know, I got some kill points for my general right then and there, and and part of the name of the game was uh, have your general kill a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, it was the Tayrathian Invitational, so we went to honor Cain and all his glory. Yep. And what, what was that uh, award so then, name? What was that award name? Uh, I believe I'm an honorary member of the Tayrathian cult now. So, <laughs> correct. That's or at correct. least, at, at the very least, my Frost Lord is. Um, so, uh, yeah, round one, I got, I got pasted. I got a, a few victory points in turn one cause I took top one. Uh, and, uh, I think my victory points essentially stopped there. Um, then round two, I drew, uh, the, uh, the very present here, Matt Hayward, uh, <laughs> and, uh, my success after top one against Bill, uh, continued in my game against Matt, uh, just, uh, lots of slicing and dicing, some, uh, crazy rend three action from him. Uh, <laughs> just like, it's like, okay, how many wounds? Oh, uh, okay. I don't get to save those. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so real uh, quick aside here. So for the runes, um, whenever I was pumping out games, my, my girlfriend and I were just game after game after game for, for Ren 4, did nine games and I only got one enhanced rune, the entirety <laughs> of the entire series. In my Dave, in my game against Dave, two. 
<laughs> Two yeah. very important, yeah. very breaking ones. It, <laughs> uh, spirit breaking, yeah. Just, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, so after after the uh, game against Matt, uh, and he is a consummate uh, gentleman uh, in in the game. So uh, he uh, jarred my salty tears and and. Uh, uh, always, always a smile on that man's face. Uh, even when things uh, went bad for him, and he lost, you know, a model here or there. <laughs> uh, but uh, then I, I proceeded to play Cole and his corn, and and I have to, uh, if I had to choose my favorite opponent for for the event, it would have to be Cole because uh, early on. <laughs> well, that too. Uh, I don't know that he mixes well with corn, but. Uh, Early on, I went sort of in his direction in top one, and in bottom one, uh, I was I was taunting him, saying, "Come on, just just bring it, bring your three bloodthirsters right into my meat." Because I <laughs> oh no, oh no, uh, it's just... oh he's back. And, we didn't lose and... him completely. He froze. Uh, for, oh. He froze for a minute. Yeah, you were talking, you were talking about your meat. Too? Yep, yep. Your coal was coming into your meat. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, and my meat was coming right at Cole. Um, and so, so I'm, I'm oh, talking and saying, you gotta, you gotta bring those, those, <laughs> those three bloodthirsters. You gotta bring them right to it. Uh, and he said, you know what? I'll let the dice decide. He said on a one, two or three, I'm going in after you on a four five or six. I'm playing smart. <laughs> sure enough, he rolled a three. Just went right after it. Uh, he did roll the exploding six. All three of them uh, attacked right away. Uh, and I just rolled bonkers for saves. Uh, my stuff survived it. And I went on. My general just swept through all three bloodthirsters, uh, making him the most bloodthirsty of generals on the day. Mm -hmm. um, and once his bloodthirsters were gone, his, his army was... Done, <laughs> um, but but it was he he played the uh, the very narrative way. Let the randomness guide you, and blood for the blood god. There it was. There you go. <laughs> he didn't and, turtle. You know, I, I just he did not that. turtle. No one would turtle with corn. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> blood thirsters, turtle, turtle, turtle. <laughs> <laughs> hold, hold. <laughs> you know what? I just I just realized. The reason why I rolled all those sixes for those runes that day, uh, it's because of the the very chamber that uh, Chuck runs at all times. Crave, um, crave. That's Kraith. what. Kraith is those the weren't best. those weren't rune rolls. Those were crave rolls. That's what that. Yes. Was. <laughs> if you are not playing crave, you are a coward. Put the army down. <laughs> Just put it away. Going. Just. <laughs> You're done, uh, Neil. You you walked away with some hardware, didn't you? Did I won the uh, coolest army award for uh, going to get myself slaughtered with all butts? Well, <laughs> actually, uh, let's not forget. Uh, I mean, actually, I think it was the three of you that gave me narrative for your army. But Neil, yours was yeah. framed, and it was just very well laid out and fleshed out. Like I, I could tell exactly what the theme was, what you're going for. It was a little bit of a. It was a contract, and then a little bit of like a, a journal entry. It was really nicely right. done. Actually, it's sitting next to my Terathi crown on my shelf right now. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Now, yeah, what about a... the twenty dollar bill I stapled to mine? <laughs> uh, well, it's probably I, I, Matt and Dave. I took yours. I put it behind Neil's in his frame. So there's a twenty dollar in that frame, apparently. Because <laughs> I kept them all. Somebody I just put Neil's on like front. A relic one there, yeah. 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 No, yeah, that uh, that that narrative was uh, designed as I was trying to write uh, my narrative, like kind of like a narrative example for that event that I talked about earlier, mm -hmm. uh, which we're putting together. Um, so yeah, it was kind of pre-made and pre pre uh, pre-built, and it worked pretty well for this event. So I just kind of there's actually another part of it that goes through, uh, you know, the names of all the boats with like named names for the two dwarves and the boats and everything else and what the gun layout. So it looks like. Um, like an asset sheet that goes mm. along with. Uh, That's really. That's really <laughs> with um, there are. I, I do have some plans at some point to get like an old like uh, 
aviation, you know, log book or something like that, you know, leather bound, whatever. And I'll, you know, go to events and I'll just write, you know, which boat killed what, and how many times it was blown up. We'll make them aces and everything else, you know, whatever. <laughs> so I, I got plans for it, but uh, the, the nice. narrative will be increased. Well, I think that that's, this has been like an excellent like walkthrough of it because I think between the three of you, I mean, we were able to mention because you we with you guys we talked about at least one game from everybody that attended the event. Um, yeah. So I guess uh, to to kind of put closure on the gaming aspect of it, um, Bill Souza walked away as Tayrathi's champion for this year. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> It's good yep. to see that guy finally get a win under his belt. Ah, I know <laughs> he's been he's been struggling for years. Big fish, small pond, you know. But hey, big leagues I, now. I took it easy on him round one. I, I gotta yeah, say, yeah. nice to, nice to give him. A I was but... rolling four sided dice. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So he's got the uh, Tayrathi's champion plaque as well as the uh, belt for this year. And uh, also, let's uh, everybody, if you have a drink and you have some place nearby, just just pour one out. For uh, for Cole, Cole, who won the uh, the I don't know the the Tarat Tarathi's brick, <laughs> that, that 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 brick from the conversion that I turned into the last place trophy. So Neil's Neil's legacy will live on through the Tarathi Invitational, um, because essentially the first place winner uh, got a invite back and the belt for a year. The last place, which was Cole gets to take that brick home for the year and also gets an invite back next year for redemption. So <laughs> I'm, I can't wait to see those Ideneth next year, Cole. I can't wait to see them. <laughs> <laughs> now I would also like to point out Cole and I actually discussed this and, and we, we decided we were going to try for the tie just to make you have to figure out how you're going to deal oh, with no, no, no. Who, who actually lost. I see here. <laughs> and I, and I my knew. dice refused. I, my dice refused to play along with that. See, there was, there was two things I put into that pack that I loved. One was there's no sportsmanship because if I didn't think you wouldn't, if I, if I thought you were a dick, you weren't invited. So that's why there's also there's, one of the reasons why I brought contract. Yep. Uh, <laughs> hey, it made for some, there was some fun smack talk going on pre events uh, for the first for weeks. And, and the second was any tie would be determined by a beer chugging. Now, here's the thing mm-hmm. I thought about that. What if two people are going for last place? Because I thought some people might do that. So. <laughs> I had it said in my head, and it didn't get there, so I'm saving it even for next year, but if two people going for last place have a beer chuck, here's the thing. I'm not going to tell them you need to finish first or last to get last. (laughs) I have in my head who wins and how you win with that beer chuck for last place, but I'm not going to tell anybody. But I had it planned out. My favorite... I had it written down. My favorite part of that statement is that Chuck knew that he invited people who were so bad at Warhammer that he figured <laughs> there would be a battle for last place. <laughs> well, let's see. I invite. I invited. Let's see. Yeah, I invited two of the top people in the in the world <laughs> to play, <laughs> and then and then the rest of the people that I know that I like in the local area <laughs> that would come and just play and do stump dumb stuff with me for the day. The people that couldn't get a win without an opponent. <laughs> <laughs> I was joking around with Dave. I was just like, that was a lot of fun. You know, I'm going to make my own invitational, and I'm only inviting people who are worse than me at this game. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't find seven people worse than me at this game. Is <laughs> yeah, I think the only the only stunner that, that uh, Chuck is surprised about the uh, the the duel for last place is that there was only one of the three of us part of that <laughs> yeah i thought more people would actually go for it i thought like because I, I put it out there beforehand hey last place gets invited back i figured there'd be somebody that would lose game one and be like i'm going right to the bottom but no you, everyone everyone played I, I in didn't the spirit of the event. that but i was going for it yeah yeah exactly but everyone, everyone played with a yeah. good spirit um very thankful that everybody came out because you were all gentlemen my wife loved every single one of you she's like you have a great group of friends i'm like i know I can get them to lift more. We'd be in great shape, and then you know. <laughs> but but uh, hey, round is a shape too. Actually, I, I will say this: if anyone, if anyone has an event like this or trying to run, um, like at, in this, because this was at my house, it was in my backyard. Um, so if you're going to go to an event like this, uh, or you're going to have one, uh, 
Alex, uh, our Skaven and, and Russian friend, he brought my wife a card that said thank you for letting us play in the backyard, as well as her own pastries. Like he brought <laughs> he brought donuts. He was a gentleman, but like like she was just like, oh my god, this is great. So, pro tip. <laughs> If you're going to someone's house and they have a wife, just get them a little something special. Like, thanks for putting up with us for today. Uh, wow. and, and Dave wow. pulled the classic. He brought a case of uh, Guinness for me, um, which we I immediately cracked open and shared with the people that were there setting up the tent because I was like, cool, beer, let's do it. Um, yeah, I, I had a blast, uh, quote unquote, running the event because one, I knew Nova wasn't happening. Um, so, and I, but at the same time, I didn't want to start painting all the Nova terrain, <laughs> like because it's like that's a lot. That's, of, that's point number one. Yeah. That's point number one. I didn't want to, I, I, but I wanted the feeling of accomplishment for running an event this year. <laughs> well, actually, I mean, if, if you run a COVID uh, COVID event, you got you know that's some street cred. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. This is this is this is like down dirty. Um, but yeah, I, I got to prep some tables. I got to make a pack, but I got it got to be fun. It got to be loose. I got to see my buddies. Um, I got to watch them have fun throughout the day. Um, I got so much beer that I don't know what to do with. I hope people want to take it when they come over. Uh, <laughs> but no, um, like I said, it was just a, it was just a great day hanging out with friends, not worrying about anything, but just playing Warhammer, just just chilling and having a, a great time. So. I'm very happy and thankful that you all came out. Um, oh, yeah. Like the prep work I put into it, I I would have done more if I had more time. If I'm honest, like I I have decided, and my wife is okay with it. That this is going to be a yearly event. Uh, I may start branching out next year. Um, I have a few people a little farther away um, that have some invites right now. Um, obviously, barring where the world's at and what they feel comfortable in, with doing and all that. So we'll wait and see you there. But yeah, Tayrathi Invitational 2021 will be happening. It's a <laughs> now a yearly thing. Nice. <laughs> Here we go. And and I do expect everybody that came this year to just show up next year and just hang out. <laughs> like <laughs> Sorry, that, that would be great if that was not the expectation. We just did it anyway. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I just see it happening, so I'm just preparing for it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna help you run. He's the just event. hoping. Yeah. I'm gonna help running that. He's event. just hoping for someone else to man the grill. That's all. It's, that's... Oh, uh, do yeah. you want to explain the um, the inside joke I, I led at the beginning of the episode with about the garage sales? Oh yeah. So uh, I I live like I said I, I live in a pretty rural area, but it's still it's a small little community town. Uh, very Americana, very classic in that style. Uh, it's very also 1960s. It, yeah, yeah, 60s is good. Um, so, also, it's pretty common there to be tents out when the weather's nice, and you're walking, and people walk around my town all the time. It's a very, very relaxed place, very pedestrian friendly. And we had multiple people walk up into my yard. I'm like, "Can I help you?" And they're just like, "Oh, I thought this was a yard sale." I'm like, <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> so next year, I actually, I, I this, this is not hobby related, but I did just finish fencing in the rest of my yard. <laughs> And I will put gates up, so I can put a sign on the gate that says "Not a yard sale next year." We'll be good. We'll be great. Make sure to include the uh, the murder holes. <laughs> well, the, yeah, well, it's it's a split rail fence, so I think we'll be okay. We'll make it work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I, I, I guess um, I will say this uh, as a little like to get my own little mini game in here. So that Wednesday after, I invited Ben. Uh, who was my Cotio, quote unquote, grill master, over to my house since he lives six houses away from me, and we played a thousand point Age of Sigmar game. I took a snake daughters of Cain list, Kraith, of course, and um, he brought his beast of chaos. And I'm happy to say that, you know, I, I deployed the army with you know, it was just snakes, and I was I'm used to running just hordes of ladies. I'm like, there's not a lot here, even at a thousand point, like. Whew, it's, this is gonna be rough, and I managed to pull out the win on him. So I was, I was pretty pleased. Actually, uh, it came down to turn five. Uh, whoever won the priority roll. Uh, well, it came down to if, if I won the priority roll, I guaranteed it. If he won the priority roll, he had to make some pretty decent charges. So it's still more in my favor. But um, yeah, so I, even even Ben and I got a game in, and uh, 
that was my first time playing on my daughter's cane table, and I, I took the win. So I'm very happy to have christened the board <laughs> properly. All the rest of that was riffraff. <laughs> well, <laughs> actually, well, I, I will say this: I, I put uh, Roger, who came to the event, he played uh, he played his Calibron list. Um, granted, he had to borrow one of my models, so technically Terathi was represented. Uh, represented, <laughs> represented. That's the word on the board. Easy and, for you to say, Chuck. Hey, not really. I'm talking like I type tonight. <laughs> but I put him on the on the cane table since he's the only one there with the uh, daughter's cane army, and he took the win there too. So uh, it, double victory for the daughter's cane in the Tehrathian <laughs> temple. So yeah, uh, that's that's really it. I mean, I, I thought maybe we'd have time to talk about some of the fun releases like Broken Realms. Um, well, but it's it's uh, we're already pretty deep in this episode. I don't want to stretch it out too much farther. Well, I have a fun anecdote. Okay. That I would like to play. Uh, I'd like to put out here that I discovered today from the Lumineth Facebook uh, page. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because again, since now next week the um, the most uh, contentious models are being released. The Alarath. <laughs> um. <laughs> Alarath half of the so Lumineth. like yeah so right now every other post is these are the best models ever these are the worst models ever back and forth back and forth so I found one one person that put a cultural uh, a spin on it <laughs> uh, I'm not going to pronounce his name for privacy and also I would butcher it so I'm just going to read what he posted here okay um, and again this is in preference of what do people think about the Stone Guard. So he says, I hate it because in my country, buffalo is the symbol of dumb or stupid. <laughs> Calling someone buffalo is a direct insult, parentheses, and even can be resulting in a defamation lawsuit. <laughs> and we also say, quote, put buffalo horn on one's head means to commit adultery to own spouse, parentheses, to make your spouse dumb as buffalo. So the feeling is not quite right seeing someone walking proudly with buffalo horns on their head. <laughs> <laughs> he, this 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 person, he or she, I'm not, I'm not sure if you said that, but uh, they they bring up an interesting point that uh, yeah is definitely not probably considered as a whole but like yeah the the cultural aspect of some of the things like you can see certain things like obviously because it, it, it's influenced, but I, I never would have thought about that. <laughs> I, well, yeah, same thing. I never thought about it. You know, I saw everyone like, these are terrible, these are the best, but he was, that was a point that I just thought was way too entertaining <laughs> to, to, to myself. <laughs> like I said, I, if, if, if this person is listening, I will offer them one rebuttal. Teclas has never and will never do anything stupid or wrong, and I will stand by that <laughs> That's the hill I'm willing to die on. Right next to Marathi's Let me just say best this. ever. So Let I'm just, just I'm just like that's trip. my counter that's my counterpoint. All right, and if if you don't if you can't deadlift more than me, then your opinion does not count. All right, <laughs> what I, if we I can deadlift you. Can I say this? I I, I would normally agree with you a hundred percent, but then he put those pants on. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, those pants. Maybe we'll call it a wardrobe malfunction. Hey. I don't know. <laughs> hey, you can't touch this, Neil. Yeah, you, you can't, can't touch, touch this. this. He woke up in the morning. He's shuffling through his techless laundry, and he's just like, ah. <laughs> he's um, like, wait, wait, no, no. He, he's he's like, gonna go with yoga pants, but nah. No, no. See, he woke up. He woke up one day, and he's like, you know. We're in the realm of light. We're technically the sun for all these different realms. It's hot. All right. I don't really like this. I need some breeze. I need to keep. I need to keep the boys from sticking from to the legs. And if they do, if they do swing over and get get a little stuck. I just need to be able to just like that shift. But I don't want. I don't want anyone. I don't want Selenar to see me doing that shift. So I just free him up. His, you make a good point. Yeah, I, I so mean, what does what does the? And he couldn't he couldn't wear a kilt because he's flying. Otherwise, I'd say go kilt all the way. But <laughs> so what word appears on the butt of Elven yoga pants? Ooh, this is a topic <laughs> I like. <laughs> I mean, is it just 
Hish? Is that? <laughs> I, th- I think Hish. Hish. Hish would be. Hish would be a good one. Um, I believe it's 40. Buffalo. Hish ish. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm trying to think. Like, what would the Elven word for no, Wolverine Buffalo, be? Because then they're dumb. Hish ass, bitch. Right? There you go. Hish bitch. Hish bitch. <laughs> yeah, or just be like Supreme. The brand. <laughs> <laughs> and what word do they print on the back of their hammer pants? Uh, just... It's just the lyrics. It's just, just the lyrics. <laughs> exactly. All right. Um, but if you guys are okay, uh, we'll save maybe the Broken Realms talk for next time. Sure. And, uh, and then maybe we'll we'll dive a little bit more. The Lumineth will be released by the time we record next. Uh, hopefully, the Giants will be released. I don't know. Soon. <laughs> TM. <laughs> But yeah, um, we'll we'll get into all that fun next time. But for now, we'll do our pleasant trees and our sign off. So, Neil, where can they find you? Uh, at Neil Araka on Twitter or um, Red Four on Facebook. Matt, what about you? Uh, tweet at me at Strength Hammer. Hey, Matt. <laughs> Sure. All right, <laughs> Dave. Uh, most often on Facebook at the Ren4 group, but now also, much to my chagrin, uh, on Twitter at Night of the Dave. <laughs> and woke uh, rope. <laughs> woke rope. Um, as for me, you can find me on Twitter as well as Instagram at Strengthhammer underscore. Uh, so until next time, everybody, stay Stormcast strong. Mm-hmm.